One. It is a Wednesday. Do not look at your calendar and ask yourself, why am I seeing these guys, man? Yeah. So what we plan on doing right now, or what we're actually doing, is that we're going to be giving you content in terms of what are, what's going on in the current market today. Yeah. And a lot of things are actually going on in the background and we're not aware of them or we don't know how to actually position ourselves. Yeah. So this edition on Wednesdays, we are going to be coming to you really explaining what's going on and how can we actually position ourselves better in the market. 100% current affairs it is. So we don't want to only focus on the content side. We also want to focus on what is happening in real time. So yeah. let's go for it. Now, the first article that I saw, man, yeah. was that Johannesburg is having a huge blow, right? So basically what they're saying is that Johannesburg, a lot of people in Johannesburg are flocking off of Johannesburg, leaving Johannesburg and going more towards your Cape Town. Yeah. And now it's, it's, it's a bit scary the first time I read this part. But now once I went deeper into content, because that's what I'm always, that's what I'm an advocate for. If you're going to be reading something, don't just read that article. Go deeper into the topic uh, and really understand. Don't read the headline. I don't, don't just be level, guys. Don't be shallow and just leave it there at uh, the, 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 the title the, or the headline. Go deeper. Now, what was your perspective on it, man? Man, again, level is that, you know, with articles, you need to be very technical and also understanding what happens. Because sometimes you find that Johannesburg might have hit its peak. Mm. So when you're looking at something that's emerging versus something that already hit its, hit its peak. Yeah. So of course, when you're looking at those stats in terms of the rental increase or looking at how many people are now new first-time buyers, you find that one market could be saturated whereby this one is really emerging. Mm. So again, even when you read something, it's very important to be technical and also understand where is the writer coming from? Yeah. I mean, they know, I, I know that you're a numbers person. You, you, you really like going deeper into numbers, right? Yeah. So here's one of the estate agencies. This is what they said, right? They said that um, properties, right, in Cape Town okay. sold for 241% more okay. than in Johannesburg. But now, if someone just leaves it there, you might say that, okay, Cape Town is the better option, right? Yeah. But now there's a technical part where they got a lot of people where they said that these are only properties that are selling for more than 10 million. So properties selling for more than 10 million in Cape Town actually sold 241% more than in Johannesburg. Now, I had sat down and I thought about it, right? And I asked myself that how many people can really afford a house that's worth 10 million? So, which brought me to a thing of, would it then be more of your people that are above the middle class that are moving towards Cape Town? Yeah. And then the guys that are not able to move in Cape Town are still moving around Johannesburg, right? Because now we went deeper into the article and they're saying that with Cape Town or with Johannesburg, right? Um, they offer two things, right? So with Cape Town, Cape Town offers more of capital growth. Okay. And then with your with your with your with your with your Johannesburg, Johannesburg offers more. Uh, they wrote it as bang for buck. I saw these two apartments, and I and I was looking at these two apartments, looking at the rental versus how much it's it's going to be selling for. Okay. Guys, Cape Town is expensive. Whoa. I'll 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 we'll find a way of plugging in the pictures to these apartments, and you'll see for yourself, right? So there was a two bedroom, two bath. Selling in Pretoria in, in, in Cape Town, yeah. it's selling for 249,500. No, 2,495,000. Okay, guess how much the rental is going for? Is it 20,000? 17,000. Sure, that's a two bedroom, two bath, right? I come to Johannesburg <coughs> and a neater apartment is selling for 995,000. And then the rental income there, it's 9,200. You're looking at the two and you're seeing that with Cape Town, it's more expensive than when you're looking at your Johannesburg, man. What's your take on that? If I had 900,000, mm -hmm. what would 900,000 buy me in Cape Town yeah. versus what would 900,000 buy me in Joburg? Yeah. That's what we're saying that you would then see your 900,000 working more for you in Joburg than in Cape Town. Yeah. Yeah, sure. 
Yeah. No, I get you. But I don't crush my aesthetically pleasing part. I get you. It's very aesthetically pleasing. No, no, the second article, man, let's go into it. So, what the article stated is that there's a shift in interest rates expectation. Yeah. I know, as I was reading what the article was saying. I got happy, eh? I got yeah. happy. The first part, when, when they say that possibility of interest rates going down, oh, I got excited. I just saw interest rates going down and I was excited saying that. Finally, can't I? They're saying possibility, man. I know how Neil hates speculation. I was getting there. <laughs> I think I've read and I've listened to so much news talking about the possibility that I, I, I just block my brain when it comes to that. Mm. I'm just waiting for that announcement from, from, from the SARP yeah. that, no, officially, it's really dec- decreasing. And you, you, know, you know what the thing is? Every time when, when we get the news, you just see, you know that picture. Which picture? You don't know that picture. Which picture? Uh, everybody know. knows that picture, man. I don't know it. Whenever you see interest rates going down, there's always a thumbnail of... I still see you saying... Ah, then you know, Guti, there's, there's increase or there's decrease. <laughs> but yeah, man. No, but level for sure, man. I mean, right now, it's at 11.75. And I, I guess... I don't even guess. I know that every property investor would be relieved... Those guys that fixed it, they are excited, man. For them, they don't care whether it's going up. They actually celebrate every time it goes up. Yeah. I know someone. I know someone who fixed their interest rate, and every time it yeah. goes up. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so for us, man, when it came to this topic, when we were reading about it, we we're really hoping that uh, things will really look good. Level from yeah. your side, when you were reading the article. Okay. So from my side, right? I saw I when I was when I was reading the article, right? Yeah. I saw two different perspectives. So you're going to be getting two different perspectives. One perspective is coming from the owner, yeah. and then the other one is coming from the investor. Okay. Right. Now we need to ask ourselves that how do these two correlate, or how do they get affected, right? Now, if I was looking at it from the perspective via yeah, the homeowner. Getting a, 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 a relief looking at this interest rate because on that, on that particular document, they said that it might go down until 10%. Now, if I'm yeah. saying that it oh. might go oh. down until 10%, oh, man, not 10% the same time, oh, gradually. I, I was excited about that. No, 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 gradually. Uh-huh. They say that it might go to 10% gradually, right? Uh. Now, if I'm looking at it from a homeowner perspective, yeah. if, say, for instance, we bought the property worth 720000 yeah. right now... At 11.75%, you'd be paying 7,802 on a monthly basis. Yeah. But now, if it was to go to 10%, yeah. right, you'd be paying 6,948,16 cents. Now, when you're looking at the difference, the difference between the two would be the 840, 854. Okay. Now, what I would say for a home buyer, right, if yeah. you bought a home and you're planning to buy it, and finish it off as soon as possible. Yeah. In your head, just know that it didn't decrease. You'll still be paying the 7,802. That's if it didn't put so much strain on you that you're not eating. But some people are saying that they had to actually cut down uh, on their uh, diet. But now, if you are still able to afford the 7,800, just maintain that 7,800, yeah. you'll be able to pay off your thing as soon as po- possible. Yeah. Now, we go to the property investors. With property investors, this means that you'd actually be getting more cash flow of 854 rand on a monthly basis, which increases your return on investment. So personally, man, I see good things for property investors, man, that if I'm getting an additional 854, this means that my, 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 my affordability is actually going to be going up. Right? And also, cash flow. I'm getting more cash flow, man. You know, as you're speaking, what hit in my mind is that as property investors, we are variable. And then as whole owners, you need to be fixed. Yeah. yeah just, just fix it and continue, even though it's not fixed. Of course. Make sure that you fix it. Man. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Now, the last one, you know, I, the last one was a pain, bro. Because, ay, let me not even go there. Man. So, the last one was saying that a lot of tenants are actually owing home uh, owners. So a lot of, a lot of, wait, wait, wait. So what the article was saying is that right now tenants are owing landlords. Mm. That's a whole pandemic for property investors. Now the question is that if you are owed by your tenant, what is the way around it? Right now, way around it, 
I know a lot of tenants will say that even though I'm not paying, I also have the right to be in that house. This is my plea to you as a tenant if you are not paying. Guys, please pay the landlords. I don't know, we have this misconception that if anybody is able to buy a property, they're able to afford. So even if I don't pay them, it's still because this person actually has money. If you don't pay on that particular month, that means that the landlord can't pay. Which means that the landlord will actually get uh, uh, affected looking at their credit score. Now, on your side as a tenant, if you don't pay, if the landlord doesn't really know what they're doing in terms of they don't have uh, a property management day or they don't know how to red flag you, right? Once anything goes wrong on that property, it's easy for you to move out of that property and move into another property, right? Now, the problem is that the credit score on the landlord side is now affected. Now, as much as you as a tenant that is not paying, you do have your rights, the landlord also has their rights. Now, let me speak to the landlords. If you are a landlord or you're planning to become a landlord, please just make sure that you have an airtight lease agreement. Airtight lease agreement meaning that you went to a conveyancer and they checked that what's, what needs to be on that particular contract. Because if something is on contract, it's easy for me to take it to that person and be like, okay, here's the contract, please sign it. And then if you sign it, you're agreeing to everything that's on that particular paper. No? Yeah. No, Lebu, especially in terms of the tools that landlords are using, we really need to understand what type of tools are being used. Mm. So that's when we have the TPN report. The TPN, I mean. So with the TPN, what it is, is that this is like a database. So I'd urge all landlords to actually get onto TPN because what happens is exactly like Uber. So what will happen is that if this tenant is not paying, you are then able to flag it on the system. So what's going to happen is that the next landlord, if this person will be applying, as Lebo did mention, that what happens is that they just, they just, uh, kind of what's the thing, they squat. Yeah, they squat. They, they squat there yeah, by your... squatters in your house. <laughs> <laughs> they squat there yeah. by your property without paying rent. And then what happens is that when they feel that they're feeling too much pressure, then they leave. What's going to happen is, as Lebo did mention, they leave you with a bad, bad credit score. So what's, what you can do is that you can flag tenants so what's going to happen it's exactly like something like Experian, but then as i did mention also like um uber so that for the next person who is looking at the results or the report of that person will then see her that one is a squatter that one yeah it's a trade union for property investors man guys let's let's make sure that we use these tools so that we are able to then assist each other man. yeah yeah and that's what we have for you if you did enjoy this, please do put down on your comments, on comments that, guys, this is actually a good idea. See you next week. Invest like a pro with Non-World. No.